Hanoi, okay. <laughs> Um, um, uh, Miss Lee, Miss Lee, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can hear you. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I went to World Bank once time, and uh, they told me uh, uh, maybe open data for so, so some organization in Washington DC. Uh, they are they have a one project with uh, Ho Chi Minh City for their smart city. Uh, okay. But uh, in fact, uh, us uh, we focus on uh, environment. Okay. It's not really uh, smart cities. But uh, I, I will discuss with my boss. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So you you are from NGO, right? Yeah, from okay. NGO. Yeah. Oh, so your government also have the open data uh, official, right? Uh, in fact, uh, in in our government, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, open data is not really um, uh, start uh, now. Okay. It's only uh, on um, open resources, education data. Okay. Okay. Uh, educational resources. Okay. Uh, between the different uh, universities, uh, but it is not really uh, the uh, the government uh, public or open own data. Yeah, yeah. And uh, recently, uh, in our site, mm -hmm. we are thinking uh, probably uh, next year we will have some plan uh, in some country working together. For example, we can have a a, a training course or workshop in Vietnam. Yeah. And uh, for example, uh, some of the data scientists in mm -hmm. Taiwan or open data guy and uh, yeah. go, can go there and uh, have a training course. Or the people from ODI, Korea, Japan. I think it will be a kind of the AODP job because uh, you know to let everybody open the data, know the data is quite important. So we plan to do that. So so. Probably we can work together in the future. Uh, I, in fact, uh, uh, next uh, next year. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, in Vietnam. Yeah. In fact, now uh, in Vietnam we have uh, a group and uh, OGP Open uh, Government Partnership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, some of um, group uh, like. Um, uh, focus on open source, open source uh, software, open source software, okay. and uh, some group uh, work on the um, open educational resources. Yeah. Uh, maybe some uh, some scientists uh, work on open data, but uh, not really um, popular. It's some group uh, sharing uh, resources between them. Yeah. 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 In Vietnam, open data, I think, is a new stage uh, now. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, Fernando, good evening. Hello, hello. Yeah, Fernando, uh, can we uh, check the, you, can you share the screen? You can check, you share your, oh, your slide. I share the screen. Can, can you? We can test it first. Let's just open this slide, yes. Yeah, yeah. In the button. In the middle of the button, one sh shows the share screen. Sounds good. Let me try here. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's okay. There. Yeah. It's working. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, it's good. It's good. You can uh, uh, print, <coughs> set up the full screen. Can you? Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, very good. Very good. Great. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay. Uh, after one minute, we can start. 
that's it. Can you hear me well? Yeah, 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 very good. Okay. Hey, Cario. Yeah. Nice to see you. Okay, good morning everyone and a good evening to Fernando and uh, it's our IODC 2018 Asia Open Data Webinar. This is our session two. Uh, in uh, Monday, uh, actually Tuesday afternoon, we have a very good talk uh, with the ODI Fiona and a uh, very interesting topic about open data uh, IODC in Argentina this year. And uh, this time, and we invite uh, Fernando. And uh, Fernando uh, is a key person, is a key person for the IODC. And uh, Fernando will give us a talk later on. And later on, and we can chat about the IODC something. And uh, because uh, I just, I know, uh, not, not too many Asian people go to Argentina. I think it's very far away. So probably, uh, 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 Fernando can let, let us know more detail about what, what kind of interesting about that. And uh, we have other uh, people who want, want to join and uh, from Japan and Korea. But right now they are busy today. So they will see the, our rec recorded file later on. So uh, right now, and let's, let's begin. Uh, Fernando, the, the floor is yours. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh... Dr. Shiming, it is a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, sorry I couldn't join the other call. The other call was in the middle of the night here, but uh, I'm glad to, to do that today and, and engage with uh, partners. I believe I might have met uh, a few of you in Taiwan in the last um, uh, regional event. Uh, where we already started discussing some collaborations uh, with Dr. Shimane and the Asia Open Data Partnership, which is uh, we see as a core group uh, uh, sister events that happen around the world to promote open data and share good practices. So it's a pleasure to, to talk to you. Um, I just introduce a bit myself first. Uh, my name is Fernando Perini. I work for the International Development Research Center here in Canada. Um, and uh, I coordinate a program that's called Open Data for Development. Uh, we have been working on open data and its use the, kind of to promote sustainable development since 2010, more or less. Uh, we have been working in promoting the, the kind of regional efforts, uh, bottom-up communities uh, in, in Latin America, Africa, Asia, uh, East Europe, uh, Middle East, and uh, we have done a few uh, activities in, in, in Asia as well, but I think that kind of uh, there's definitely scope for much, much more collaboration with the global uh, community. Um, I'm going to be talking, uh, just to give a bit of background of uh, what's the, what is the OD4D network, and then I'll just dig uh, directly into the IODC, that's the focus uh, of our conversation, kind of the teams that have been kind of just plan to discuss this year, uh, kind of the structure of the conference, some of the events that uh, will happening, and some of the next steps. Uh, I'll try to be very short and uh, and have as much time as possible for kind of a good collaboration and conversation. Uh, uh, be before we go to IODC in itself, I just a bit of background of the program that or the partnership that kind of. Um, is connected to this work. Um, when um, uh, we 
kind of as part of our work on kind of promoting, we have been developing this partnership on open data for development. Um, that was, um, that has been a, a donor coordination mechanism that has supported a number of mechanisms and, and supporting the kind of establishment of regional communities. So uh, for scaling innovation, for open data approaches uh, to support governments, to, to kind of to scale innovation, to measure the state of play, kind of understanding what are the good practices and share them. Uh, some of the, these are some of the products that we have been kind of developing over time. Uh, some of them are like the conferences, but also we work on the kind of uh, defining, we supported the definition of uh, principles like the Open Data Charter. Uh, we work with um, um, establishing a research network uh, uh, throughout the years. Uh, we have a um, measurement mechanism like the barometer, the index, capacity building efforts like the School of Data, the leaders networks and kind of recently we, on the state of open data we have we are doing a publication that's kind of collected kind of it, it be launched at IODC uh, publication with um, more than 60 authors from around the world try to understand how open data is is, is has evolved on the, during the past 10 years around each one of the kind of sectors, how open data work in education, health, etc. Uh, how open data works uh, have been emerging in each one of the different regions of the world and how open data has been kind of also evolving different types of stakeholders from government, civil society, researchers, uh, private sector, and so on. So try to understand, try to do a compilation of the state of open data around the world. So this is also something that we're going to be publishing soon and try to understand. So these are some of the products. Uh, we have been working with um, regional hubs as well that have been uh, part of our network, kind of, uh, in the, as I mentioned, the, in the Caribbean, Latin America tends to be our stronger, older hubs. We have recently established three hubs in Africa, uh, Francophone, Anglophone, and kind of the MENA region. Uh, and uh, a good traditional work in East Europe. Uh, in, in Asia, we have been working with the foundation in the past to work on the kind of, uh, we gathered a number of actors in the region to think about open data back in 2015, I believe, uh, on kind of a vision for open data 2020. Uh, with the Web Foundation, Jakarta Lab, and many actors in the, the region. But I guess we we want to develop and strengthen more the work in Asia. And I think there's definitely work for uh, that we are exploring with Dr. Shimane, with Khalil, with many of you actors since the, the discussion, recent discussion. So we're very keen to collaborate on that. Um, we Digging then directly into IODC, just to give you some some more background, we have um, this is the the fifth conference. Uh, the first two happened in the in Washington D.C. Uh, the first one was in the White House. The second one was in the World Bank. They were relatively small. I think the first one was actually just forty people. Uh, second one back in two thousand ten. Uh, the second one was uh, about 300 people. Uh, when we took over, I guess, to have it outside the US, first time outside was in Canada, uh, it, we thought it would be more or less the same size and it grew already to a thousand people. Uh, the, the one in Madrid was uh, 1,700 people uh, and uh, we are expecting at least 2,000 people to, to this edition in, in, in Buenos Aires. So shows that the community, the open data community is kind of evolving, growing, kind of um, connecting, kind of um, um, more and more sectors, more more di different areas and, and end up being kind of a gathering mom moment Kind of the, the IODC becomes a momentum that all these different communities come together uh, to reflect on progress and, and and how to advance next. So the the one in Buenos Aires will be the first one that is in in the, the global south uh, outside uh, kind of last one was the first uh, outside North America then went to Europe. Uh, this one is going to Latin America. 
uh, one, our hope is that the next one will be in Africa and the following will be in Asia. So we want to kind of start building the connection because also we want this collaboration kind of to bring the conference closer to, to the different communities. So hopefully we're going to have um, uh, this also moving to Asia in the future and continue to more than just having the conference there actually have a good uh, uh, trajectory of collaboration between now and then with the partners uh, in, in Asia, in particular the Asia Open Data uh, uh, Partnership. Um, a bit of extra context, I guess, for this particular conference, I think we see that uh, uh, it marks a bit of 10 years that uh, things like the data.gov in the US uh, emerged, uh, or the data.gov.uk. So I think that there's a kind of 10 years, there's a, uh, open data is, is, is connecting many, many different communities, as I mentioned before. Um, there's a lot of uh, um, new issues also emerging from algorithms to blockchain, big data, AI, that are kind of starting to make it a different global big picture, kind of a new data economy part of it. So let's try to understand this in a new context of the open data, creating more inclusive data economies. I think it's an important moment for the open data movement to reflect on this past 10 years and then think about the, the future, no? Uh, I think some of the, the key challenges we see that also uh, they're still kind of the political will maybe is still not there yet. We see a lot of growth on nationalism, uh, some changes in kind of perspectives and so on, no? kind of what's the value of the open data versus other forms of data. Uh, and uh, I think that the, there's still uh, kind of scope for better coordination of global efforts, scaling up impact, and kind of there's also uh, still limited capacity in many places. And, uh, and of course, if the growth of the kind of Cambridge Analytica scandal and all these things, the issues around privacy and how all these things can be met, kind of balanced out in government agendas is, is very, very important. So I think there's a lot of issues to be considered as we move to this, um, to this IODC and, and it uh, kind of becomes important more to take stock of some things and build some new collaborations around this problem, this. So basically some of the objectives for the conference are to explore these new opportunities, these new debates, uh, showcase the best innovations. We received about 600 uh, proposals just for this IODC. So we really have kind of to pick the kind of very best of many of innovations and things how, to, how open data is having an impact in many areas. Uh, so it's a, uh, we, we provide a space for, for learning, networking, collaboration, of course. There, in addition to the conference, there are like about 20, uh, more than 20 pre-events where different communities get together and organize specific activities for half a day, full day, and so on. Uh, and, and the idea is that we kind of help uh, develop also these kind of partnerships at the global level but also support efforts at the regional level and kind of try to better coordinate, understand how this kind of bottom-up process of developing open data is growing around the world. So, um, so we do develop, of course, uh, some discussions around the kind of big picture, uh, of kind of what's kind of big trends in the agenda. We have a lot of discussions around the, the uh, on what works, what doesn't work, um, some some areas that we have developed uh, kind of from the third conference we develop a kind of a roadmap of key areas action areas for, for, to collaboration uh, and we do keep track how different groups can evolve and kind of keep advancing specific agendas on the government side on kind of uh, standards groups and so on so we kind of we do develop a kind of a follow-up of different action areas at the global level uh, and since last time, uh, she, Dr. Shimei was very involved, and we also had a, a regional sessions where I think that kind of we want to advance also how to coordinate kind of the co connection between the global and the local community. And I think it's also interesting 
uh, point for, for discussion with this group is kind of how to think about the regional uh, space and how to connect what's happening in Asia with the global conversation, take advantage of this space. No? So we want really to, to, to leverage this. And there are sessions of all the different continents going on and I think we can kind of create a lot of space for, for, for collaboration and synergies. Um, just to mention also some of the, the related events, we have a big end conference uh, happening. Uh, Abril Latin is kind of, a, the, the kind of Latin America open data community is very, very active. They, they have, um, they have, they already had like five regional conferences as well. Uh, this would be the sixth one and they, they do have a big end conference that uh, like some of, of that they're expecting at least 500 people just on this end conference. So, which is kind of an interesting civil society engagement. They are a very, very active kind of regional community already going on. Uh, we have a research symposium that uh, we're, we're with more academic papers and the traditional format. Uh, they all develop the publications and so on. Uh, since last uh, uh, conference, we have a, a coordination specific with the National Statistic Office communities on kind of how they can kind of leverage um, open data. In this, this conference, we're gonna focus particularly on issues around the, the SDGs report, the reporting platforms, so reporting for the sustainable development goals and how can open platforms help uh, on, on this process of the SDG reporting. Um, uh, our, obviously open data is not uh, it's just at the national level. Cities are very important to that. So a big uh, event that happens connected to that is connected to cities. Uh, we have a number of mayors coming over and kind of understanding how open data kind of at the kind of city level can kind of, I think we're still to see the emergence of a global network of cities on open data. And, but this is definitely kind of something that is kind of emerging from some of these processes. Uh, a lot of the standards come to town kind of from open contracting, open beneficial ownership, uh, all, all sorts of open standards come together to kind of define kind of common infrastructure that they need as well, kind of uh, from common identifiers to kind of um, how to build standards that are more compatible to each other in the open way. So I think there's, a, so it is also very productive from the tech, technical perspective on how to advance this. this. Uh, you already heard a bit uh, on the kind of from Fiona and ODI, they, they work on the Open Data Leaders Network. There's a, uh, we, where we gather more the government officials on, on, on networking. Um, there is, in Latin America, there's kind of a regional action plan as well going on. So in this kind of edition, I think we're gonna have a very strong uh, kind of engagement of the kind of the regional actors bringing kind of sharing experiences with uh, governments from all over the world. So I think it's very appealing to governments to really kind of engage in this kind of South-South uh, or collaboration in different uh, ways. Uh, we're gonna have for the first time a data rights forum as well that will be focused more on the issues around kind of how to kind of really connect the kind of the, 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 the communities around kind of that are thinking data protection, uh, open data, big data algorithms and all the kind of uh, big kind of new kind of in a more uh, holistic approach for, for, for data strategies in countries. So basically we know that uh, many countries are thinking, trying to think this a bit more holistically than the kind of having a data protection law, like uh, just uh, having a, a open data policy and so on. So kind of, we need to kind of also try to understand and bring in these communities together. So that's also an initial event. I'm not gonna go all of them. There are many more uh, pre-events, but I think that's just kind of uh, to give you a sense on, on, on how we kind of different things that are happening there. Um, I think that the, the, it would be interesting to, to uh, just have a broader conversation on what you think is, is useful kind of for kind of to advance the work in, in the region. I think there's something that we can do um, 
at AUDC, but also open to have some discussions with you on how we can advance uh, the work in the, um, in the Asia as well, you know, in terms of how we can collaborate and contribute uh, with Khalil and with uh, Dr. Shemaine. I think as a DRC, we're also very interested to, to support your work, especially in the kind of least developing these develop uh, communities in, in, in Asia, kind of make a region and so on. And kind of, so I think that's also a lot of space for collaboration on kind of how can we advance and bring in uh, all these uh, opportunities for, for more and more people. So uh, I'll stop there. I hope uh, I, I make a good pitch for you to kind of join me in, in, in Buenos Aires, but uh, also very interested to, to hear from you on your thoughts and how we can collaborate. Okay, thank you, Fernando. And uh, I have a question first, and later on I open the question to everyone. And uh, my question is, uh, how many people reached uh, the IODC this time? And uh, how many people from Asia now? And uh, any country had joined? Uh, do, do we have any kind of information? And uh, because uh, uh, if the people was uh, less, because right now, just I know Korea and Japan, they have some people, but not too much. Probably, and uh, we can help you to send an invitation to their government or their NGO to join. Please. Yes, uh, I don't know if I, I, I know that Steve Walker was, maybe was joining us, but I don't think he made it, but. Uh, no, no, I'm here. Oh, you're here? Yeah. <laughs> so please compliment that. I, I, I didn't know you were around, so. It's all right. I've been <laughs> listening to you. <laughs> so uh, Steve has been helping, is kind of main lead it on the organization of the conference. So maybe he can also help me on some of these questions. I think about now, I think we have about 800, maybe 900 people registered, but I we're think- just com We're just coming up on a thousand. A thousand people, yeah, but that's, that's still two months to go, no? So right. we know that uh, these numbers will grow kind of still very kind of to the last day, uh, they, they will grow more and more for sure. So we already have a thousand people registered for this year's event. So we, we definitely think that we'll be kind of, uh, yeah, we, we, are, we are expecting a big crowd. Uh, do you have any idea, Steve, on how many people from Asia registered so far? Um, about, <laughs> I'm talking very slowly as I look at the numbers. Um, uh, I would say it was about a hundred. About a hundred? Just a hundred. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That, which is, uh, I think, it's a, yeah, it's it, it's a good number. I think we got a number of um, um, pro a good number of proposals also from Asia, which is also encouraging. But uh, obviously, it's far from a lot of people. But I think it's very important that we have a good presence. Uh, from the Asian community, but also from from governments and so on. So I'm very keen to to follow up on pro, pro invitations and so on. So so we have a good engagement because I think we want also to bring this to to Asia uh, at some point soon. No? So I think it would be very important to establish these links and kind of and continue to build the the collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, 100 is a good number, but probably we can we can uh, raise the number <laughs> as we can. And uh, yeah, yeah if, if you have uh, this, uh, because for example, uh, the Japan just I know one professor, and uh, but their government official will not join just I know. But uh, if the IODC can send the invitation, I think I think you you can have uh, some kind of format and uh, send the invitation. For example, uh, Fernando, we have an Asia uh, Open Data Partnership. We have a talk, right? We have a, one session talking about Asia, right? So yes. such is kind of the session we can invite the Asia, maybe probably some leader to join. Definitely, definitely. We, we need to kind of, they, they definitely will have their presence for sure. Yeah. Uh, please, please provide some of the names of people you all think that should be invited, and you're definitely going to invite, and and if possible, um, in 
put in specific panels, but at least engage in the, the broader discussion and, uh, and also on the kind of Asia session to be properly represented and participate on the global, glo this global forum. Yeah, uh, because uh, last time uh, you, you organized a session, told, uh, invite me to talk in something in Asia. This time I have an Asia session. E each region have a one session. Uh, what does this session look like? And uh, should we organize by us or by, by, by somebody? Because the, the key uh, people we want to know, probably uh, some of our people here right now and then they can join. Yeah, no, I think that it should be organized by you. We can work with Khalil or we can work with um, um, Miko that has, I'm sure will be there, Michael Canadis as well from the Web Foundation. But I, I, I think the Asia Open Data Partnership is the natural kind of host for some of these things as the, the regional convener as well. So kind of, um, I'm very interested to, Steve, maybe he he has also some ideas on what's happening on the regional event session. So even we can talk a bit more about that, um, Steve. Sure, um, it's a little bit different this time from, from last time, there's a little bit more time. All of the regional sessions are going to take place um, in the morning of day two of the conference. They're 90 minute uh, long sessions, so there's plenty of time to do more than one thing um, during that session. I think the hope is that, that there'll be some kind of uh, uh, panel or round table updating uh, discussion at the beginning of the session where representatives from different countries would be talking about what are the current you know innovative uh, activities underway related to open data um, I think that could probably lead into a short discussion and then I think what we really are hoping is that the bulk of the time be used for something which is somewhat tailored and specialized to the region itself but a lot more interactive so a bit maybe maybe a bit more of a workshop to address specific challenges, which might be common to many of the countries in that region. Um, the whole idea, I think, the, you know, for the regional sessions is to try to build capacity on the collaboration front, to try to strengthen the linkages between countries in the region. Mm -hmm. And what you hope is actually to bring all these different strategies from the regions together as well, in a more global work plan. Also, they contribute to a global uh, strategy. So, I think that's quite important. Okay, the, the, for example, the Asia session, it will be focused on Asia people or the others. It's open to everyone. I, I'm wondering, it's, uh, what, what you propose to do is uh, to talking about the Asia issues and we invite the people, for example, these 100 people, uh, we encourage them to join or not. I, I'm thinking, I'm asking your, your idea, your, your proposed uh, the, the scope of this uh, session. Uh, I, I, Steve, go ahead. Sure. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's usually a little bit of a mix, um, but I think that primarily what happens is that the delegates and the participants at the conference who come from that region are the ones who want to go to the regional session. Um, because they want to actually connect with other people who are from that region. From that region, um, they want to be able to network with other people who are working in the region on the same on, on the same types of, of projects and topics. And everybody, you know, in that way, gets a little bit of a you know of an update on you know what's currently happening in the different parts of the region from the other countries that they don't live in. Mm -hmm. um, but there are always some people who come from outside of the region too, um, because they're in because they're particularly interested in finding out what's going on in that region. But it's probably you know generally about eighty twenty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm thinking uh, uh, AODP or me can support you to organize the Asia session. And uh, uh, if you need any kind of help, and we can help you. For example. Some people I, I know uh, is a key person in some in some countries, and we can invite them once again. And uh, if, if they cannot go, and uh, probably I will send the invitation to maybe uh, one video video tape or something or video conference call to them directly. So so 
uh, if you need any kind of help, please let, let me know. And uh, probably I can help you to filter the what these this 100 people join and we can let you know who is the key guy, who can talk something and who can show something. Excellent. Why, why don't I follow up with you um, yeah. either uh, tomorrow or the beginning of next week? Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. We would like to do that. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering who, uh, who do anyone who have the idea? To, uh, just I know, uh, uh, Yusuf, Yusuf, you, you will go to IOD CTC, right? Do you have any comment? Yusuf. Yusuf. It's muted, yeah. Yeah. Yusuf. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so she should be able to hear me. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping I can join. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I mean, for, from my viewpoint, I, what we raised in the talk on Monday, I think that was important, um, the invitation letters. Um, in, in Asia, like, like you mentioned, we need the governments don't move until they get an actual invite letter. Um, so uh, I think that's the next process that we should do as soon as possible because uh, having been in government, they're going to have a couple of committee meetings to decide who's going to go and so on. Um, so it'll take probably a month before you know, they decide, okay, this is who we're going to send. So I think the process of um, invite invitation letters and templates and getting the list should probably go out soon um, if we want to get better participation. Um, from uh, at least from government in this region. Yep. Uh, excellent. Let uh, please help us with that and just give us the names of people you want us to send invitations, and we will definitely proceed. We have some contacts and some invitations, but uh, you you definitely have a better network there. So I, we count on you, and we're gonna work to to move the invitations very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, just I know Japan, uh, their open data uh, of government official have some transition uh, recently. So uh, I think uh, uh, maybe probably an email to them and uh, probably I, I will ask the, the email address uh, for the government official and uh, maybe pass the information to you and you can send the uh, invitation later. Because sometimes the government official, if they want to join the IODC, uh, you should let them know, okay, you have one maybe uh, five minutes or 10 minutes talk or join the round table or panel, panel or something. And uh, at least they have one job for one country and uh, they, they will be good for them to uh, get approval from their higher level. So in Asia, the culture is like this. So please uh, probably in LDP side, we can help you to uh, send you maybe, maybe some one country, one government official and uh, they should pay by themselves and what LDC can do is send an invitation, uh, promise them, and they can join the Asia session. Just uh, maybe short talk, maybe five to 10 minutes yeah. talk. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So as long as you could get the, the names and the emails t addresses to us, um, we'll send the, we'll make sure the invitations go back out immediately. Okay, okay, sure. And let, let's do it uh, uh, next week. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, anyone have the questions? Uh, probably, uh, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel. Yeah. Please. Hi, hi, hi there. Uh, th thanks again, Dr. Shiming, for organizing this call. Uh, I'm, I'm, hi, and hi, Fernando. Thank you for uh, the introduction. I'm a little bit familiar with you, your name, and your face because. Uh, I was the open data lead for the Philippines from 2014 to 20, 2013 to 2015. And then it was IDRC who sponsored me for the 2015 Ottawa IODC. So I have good memories of that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I, 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 and the, the last call we had on Tuesday, I, I brought up to the team because I... I, no, I, I had these conversations with Dr. Shiming 2015 back in Ottawa. So my first connection with uh, IODC uh, with AODP was through that conference. Okay. So yeah. so I, I think that that was in itself a productive you know outcome output of uh, networking, bringing people together. But since then, yes. maybe I, I I worked with them for maybe a few months. I got out of touch because 
uh, there was a, uh, there was a change of government in 2016 so i'm i'm out of government now um and then so uh, i i think you discussing the asian participants and just stepping back out of the you know topic of the conference in itself i was we were discussing last tuesday that perhaps aodp as you know constituted now could perhaps review or reevaluate itself perhaps with the help of external partners such as maybe idrc because you are strong with you know regional engagement and bringing countries together regionally uh, there might be something that we have now on bringing the asian community to get together and and i'm sure this has been talked about for the past 3 4 years but i think you know dr shiming has this renewed energy especially that there's this conference they're organizing in korea there's this conference in argentina so this might be a good opportunity to formally organize something whether we we pursue the aodp route we get a you know full time or part time one two person secretariat i don't know if how the jakarta labs of web foundation could come in or your asian open data 2020 vision could you know uh, be part of that as well um something that you know has a permanent one two person coordinator even if part time so that i think the value immediately that we have now is that uh and especially with the uh, concern with use of it it will be nice if there's a team who's on the ground so to speak who can refer people to other people who can participate in these conferences so you know we we, we always have trouble with who's the appropriate person in government who's yeah. the prominent cso's who should attend um, yeah. and then i i just want to link that with you know one of your slides it, it the, the idea of wavering political commitment because it's a particular experience that you know we have since you, we had this nice open data program of course i'm a bit biased because i was the program lead from 2014 2013 to 2015 but then with the change of government in 2016 you know there I, i'm sure you've heard of of our you know democratic challenges but Uh, in a way, open data is apolitical, so they don't care about that enough to touch it. But at, at the same time, you know, it it died a slow death. Mm-hmm. So in my cons- in, in my consulting work now, I still hear government agencies talk about open data. So in a way, it's a it's become a culture or it's but it's become a norm. But the team is not there anymore to you know curate the data in data.gov.ph to mm-hmm. uh, to proactively um, uh, promote standards. So mm-hmm. the, the open data portal is languishing. There's no group of five to ten people like we had before who would do outreach to CSOs, do outreach to private companies, uh, promote open data to government. So uh, and and conferences, as we all know, is a good is always a good jump start for governments to recommit. So I don't know if IRDC would I well. It it would be nice if I could join, but I would say that it would be nicer if someone from our government could join. Mm-hmm. To to I, if, if the discussion could be if it's a senior official or someone who's technical who could you know do do the day to day work. But in a way, uh, IODC was a positive experience for me back in Canada because you know it, it's a recommitment for me. It's it's nice to have gone to Ottawa. Uh, it's nice to promote our work there. I was speaker for two sessions, so I think uh, uh, the conferences are always. A good tool for recommitment for government. So just again, just stepping back, uh, just away from the conferences. Uh, I don't know if Fernando, you could help us explore coordinating. I I told Dr. Shim, absent, uh, you know, permanent secretariat. He is our fearless leader. He is our ad hoc secretariat for now. So uh, if there's something there that we could organize formally, so w- when these opportunities come in, like conferences, but more than that, you know, coordinating yeah, research. Yeah, no, it's practical work on the ground. I agree. Yeah. So, um, uh, so my my suggestion to Dr. Shiming is to, uh, in a way, I think this is a resourcing issue. Whether they can devote enough personnel, they can devote budget from uh, their group from the Taiwanese government. If not, then perhaps uh, the reaching out to ODI was good, but uh, I, I I I know they have certain constraints. IDRC might be a good partner, but you know that's a resourcing issue that you have to deal with as well. So uh, at at any rate, uh, I, I, my my suggestion is we we continue this engagement beyond the conference, beyond this conference, and even before this conference, if there's something there that we could continue to coordinate on uh, on a you know secretariat, AODP right. full organizational level. So that's it. 
I, 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 I fully agree. I think that's a very important uh, way, is the right way to think about these things. Is these are not just kind of, should not, it's kind of, it's a nice opportunity for doing things and engaging people, but then we need to actually to think about the, the long-term effort. Uh, and uh, I think IDRC is, co is, is committed to, to, to try to help on this, on something along this line. So what you're proposing in terms of the, the kind of having a small secretariat that supports the work in the region, especially for us as IDRC, our focus would be particularly to strengthen the work or the communities in kind of in, in Southeast Asia and the kind of the Mekong region and South Asia as well. So kind of building those connections and supporting those to kind of come up to the level of some of the more advanced economies or kind of, I think if you frame it that way, I think we have some initial ideas we were discussing with uh, Dr. Shiming and, and, and Kairiu, but I think we could, uh, I would hope we could move quickly actually, and ideally even having some plans and to engage and really move on this idea as soon as possible. We know that, uh, yes, uh, I, I fully agree. Dr. Shimei is our kind of champion and our kind of <laughs> okay. natural leader. And, but yeah, uh, also kind of we, we, we maybe can uh, build some connections. And if there is a potential partnership with the Taiwanese, uh, uh, with AODP in terms of also resources, we even better, no? But I guess we, I don't see what be able to contribute probably to some plans on that. We, maybe uh, we should circulate a draft of some ideas uh, that we had already, but kind of really have a discussion and formalize something to, to move this idea to the next level. I think it would be better to be just ideas, but really becoming practice and, and, and activities. I, I fully agree that we need to move forward. Yeah, uh, Fernando and uh, Gabriel, and I also fully agree about your idea. And uh, uh, yesterday, I I was invited to our government high level government official to talking, talking about open data. I told them uh, open data is not information uh, division doing the things. It, it 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 should be a kind of political and also culture, also some economic issues. So I tell them the IDRC case, our government of foreign affairs should. Uh, spend some money uh, for this area. So uh, I think in, in next maybe three or four months, I will push our government uh, to raise for funding, not only Taiwan, but also Korea and Japan. And uh, working together, we, we, we hope we can have uh, some funding, extra funding for this region, working together. For example, we can go to Philippines, go to Vietnam, Cambodia, and we can invite a speaker from Canada, any kind of press to have a kind of a seminar or come a workshop to work in together. And then probably we can have some project in this region. So we are, we are trying to do this. But you know, it, it's a, it's need the budget. Sometimes, you know, in Asia, uh, we have a budget year and uh, it should be next year. So we plan to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we hope we can work in with the IDRC in the future. <laughs> and yeah. it's our plan to do, yeah. Yeah, but probably we can we can talk something uh, when we met in Argentina. Yeah, talk more detail. Probably uh, if we have a detailed uh, agenda list and uh, for the next year, and uh, probably we can sign something. To maybe sign some MOU working together, uh, more solid uh, agenda in the future. And uh, uh, any questions? Jo Josh, do you have any comment? Josh, um, sorry, I just joined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay can I, yeah, and, nothing more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn? Uh, Glenn? Yes. yes, please, please. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, and first of all, thanks for AODP, Dr. Peng, and uh, for organizing this meeting. Also, Fernando, for that uh, insightful presentation. Uh, so, uh, uh, I mean, so I think my, my comment is actually in line with what Gabriel has mentioned. I think we have discussed this in the, in the Monday meeting as well. And it's good to hear that, uh, you know, IDRC has also had a commitment in supporting uh, uh, a platform like AODP and, you know, replicating the experience that you know, IDRC have 
uh, in engaging with the similar platform in other regions like what happened in uh, in South South America, uh, and 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 that is also it's a, it's a good it's a good thing. I think consider what happened uh, in these regions, uh, like for example in Indonesia, the government has already had a high interest in you know open government. And the open government initiative is seen as you know one of the uh, solution for uh, for building a trust between the government, the citizen, and government. And you know several local uh, government in Indonesia has already implemented. Now, at 26 district and cities in Indonesia already have open data portal. So this is quite. Uh, the the open data movement and open data and open government initiative is actually uh, is gaining traction in in, in this country. Um, the civil society as well is quite very it's actually very active. Uh, there are a lot of uh, organization already working in different thematics areas of open open data. So this is a is this is a is a good resource for for this movement to, you know, to go flourish in, in, in Asia. So uh, I think um, what, what is needed is now the, we have some sort of a strategy at, you know, organizational level or this platform level. So organize ourselves uh, better uh, and, and, and have the support that is needed to implement that. Uh, and, to get implement the, the strategy um, yeah uh, so I we have support from the web foundation here in Japan because we are also part of the web foundation so we are implementing quite exciting uh, initiative right now we are working with World Bank implementing open contracting project in the city of Bandung West Java and this is uh, this is exciting. Uh, we worked with Christina from the World Bank. Uh, uh, Christina and the team with, with procurement, procurement team with the World, World, uh, World Bank from the Washington DC. So this is exciting. Uh, we are happy to share uh, our experience also uh, from the organizational level uh, in 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 based on our engagement in the similar platform in other uh, regions like in Africa. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, we will, it will be, it'll be great that we have uh, this strategy and I'm happy to have uh, support uh, the ODP, uh, I think in the future, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, great Glenn, nice to, to talk to you. Uh, the obviously Jakarta Lab has been a strong partner of us in many things, and uh, you mentioned two things just to reinforce the kind of uh, the open gov link with open government. Why we see kind of the open data and open government as two different things. We do have a strong collaboration with the open government community and the OGP in particular. The kind of we. We are having this thematic leadership on OD4D's thematic leadership of the OGP on the open data side. We were just in their summit now supporting governments to, on doing their commitments. And, and, and as you know, we are working also with the Web Foundation in Jakarta to focus also on, particularly on this, this idea of a feminist open government uh, approach that considers basically also uh, specifically gender issues on when they develop things like uh, open budgeting and, and kind of or open contracting and so on so I think that kind of uh, yeah we want to continue to work with uh, the Jakarta lab on some of these issues I know that you're exploring some work specifically in the Philippines and, uh, uh, and, and well the OGP countries in, in Asia that are kind of not many but I guess the work is on open data obviously go across the region. So, uh, and I think that kind of building on, definitely we are building also, I think there's a seed of the work that we did with the Web Foundation and Jakarta Lab on this idea of open data 2020, Asia and data 2020, that we 
connected with this broader strategy and the kind of the maturing and the evolution of the, the, the community in the field, we need to rethink, rebuild and kind of re, re-energize the, 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 our strategy for the next five years, I guess, no? The kind of 25, I guess. <laughs> and really kind of think about the kind of all the way to, let's say, if you're gonna have the IODC in Asia in 24, at least kind of, or no, 22, no? At least we need to have a good strategy going all the way to 22 uh, that really kind of has a kind of clear strategy on how we are kind of collaborating and working together. So uh, yeah, I think that's uh, all, all good points. Okay, uh, we have uh, people from uh, Cambodia, a uh, fee try. Please try. Do we have any comment? Uh, I'm sorry that I just joined the conversation and I'm okay. not sure that uh, um, what you has been discussed, but uh, uh, listen to the uh, last conversation and also what uh, we, um, I mean, what I mean, experience uh, engage with open data in Cambodian and also in um, other country in the, low, in the Mekong country, like five country in the Mekong region, so Cambodian, Laos, Vietnam, Thai and Myanmar. Uh, I I think that uh, uh, based on my observation, I, I and I learn a lot about the uh, from the report, especially from the IODC conference. You know, uh, but it seemed like a lot of focus and discussion. Not only uh, you know not uh, how much agenda focus in uh, South Asia, mostly talking about experience and expertise there like in i can say like western or in europe you know but it's it's good you know like uh, a, a aodp uh, uh, initiatives you know want to bring and connect with the uh, you know like open data movement in the in town asian and how we can work uh, you know collaborate this and bring the expertise from uh, international and you know from local to attain that kind of experience you know so uh, I, I hope that maybe uh, one day uh, the ai uh, uh, IODC will be hosted in, in South Asia, you know, then we can learn and share our expertise, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, what, what our best practice in, in our region that could be replicated with other countries, you know, in, in uh, you know, uh, internationally, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that uh, for our, I guess, especially from our program on the OD4D, I think we are very interested to to really move the the, the 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 needle into the kind of regions that were open data kind of still not that developed the, the, the work on the, um, for instance, in Latin America, we had the regional events, kind of the last one happened in in Central America, which was a kind of traditional region where there was not a lot of open data. You know, moving away from kind of obviously the Argentina and the Mexico are some of the leaders on some of these things, but kind of, going to Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and so on, it's kind of, is different, you know? Uh, so, so I think that's important. In the Caribbean, we have to start to work in Cuba, Haiti, um, in, the, in Africa, Francophone Africa, who used to be much less developed, and we want to kind of really emphasize that, that, that element. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we know that there's already a kind of vibrant uh, community in the Mekong region, so we're not starting from scratch for sure. And also there's already kind of a uh, great, great group coming out there. So we, I think we kind of, as uh, Dr. Schmeng was mentioning, we, we, I think I just would like to kind of see what we can do, work together, and we, it would be nice to work with through the AODP uh, to kind of work uh, as a region to support a kind of uh, reach out to foreign affairs, kind of foreign support in, in Japan and, and, and Korea as well. And like, can we work together to make it kind of a, the regional infrastructure more reliable and kind of inclusive for everybody, you know, as a kind of the, the economy grows. I think it's very important that we all go on that together. So I guess that's, a, I think there's a lot of opportunities. There. And, and I think that we can kind of plant some seeds, I guess, but we need to, there's, there's a long path uh, in front of us. Simen, I think you are you are muted. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, uh, I will invite uh, Karen uh, because uh, Karen uh, is very familiar with uh, Thailand people. 
the Thailand, uh, they, they have a transition uh, maybe several months ago and uh, probably will they join the IODC, Karen? Karen, Karen, please. Karen. Uh, hello. Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, of course, I will echo Dr. Peng's um, comments. I, I would think as a open data ranking number one country, I think we should really um, collaborate or help other developing countries to the, like uh, Fernando said, future open world. So um, it's a good idea that um, AODP, Asia Open Data Partnership, um, collaborates with IDRC to have um, collaboration to help like um, countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, or even uh, Dr. Um, Peng said Thailand or Myanmar, et cetera. And maybe we should or we could to, to encourage our government to um, have some kind of, uh, allocate some kind of a budget or funding to, to do these kind of things. And I will hope that will be a, a, a better open world. That's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, that would, that would be really great. Yes, uh, to follow up on that conversation for sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, probably the last one I will invite uh, uh, Miss Lee from Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam, and uh, you are Mr. Lee is our new friend. Yeah, please. Yeah, Miss Lee. Uh, okay, okay, wait a minute. Uh, okay, yes, please. In fact, I agree with uh, uh, June, all of June, because, uh, but um, I have, in Vietnam, there is uh, some uh, issues uh, like uh, politi political uh, on open data too, and uh, uh, capacity uh, people who work on open data. And another thing uh, is uh, we, um, like uh, the platform, Mekong platform, we encounter uh, uh, the problem is uh, languages uh, between the another country. So uh, is uh, uh, there there are some issues like this. But uh, now we uh, we work on open data, but not uh, uh, not officially, not officially. It's only. Uh, uh, some of my projects integrated uh, data and uh, we uh, explore and we create uh, open data and we publish uh, our data on our platform. It, and that's why um, uh, in the policy, policy in Vietnam, uh, we don't have any mentions uh, in law. So we, uh, it's uh, difficult uh, for us uh, to work on open data. So I would like, uh, we would like to explain how experiences uh, you uh, have uh, to advocate uh, on, uh, advocate uh, open data uh, to uh, people or to government like this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure. If, well, uh, yeah, we have. I think we. I, I I think that this is similar experience in many countries, I guess. And I think that kind of uh, we do have a kind of uh, in kind of the way to sustain the the political will and kind of managing transactions. So there's a lot of experience from a number of partners across the world. Uh, I I particularly kind of work one step. Uh, away sometimes from the, the collaboration project, but we do have a lot of uh, material literature, kind of what the experiences and so on. So I, I will, I, Fiona, for instance, that was uh, uh, just just the previous day. She has tons of experience from working with that in many countries. So I, and 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 a lot of material to provide uh, for all of you. But I guess also experience from other regions. So I think that. Whenever if it's possible, also joining AODC would be nice to kind of to connect all the dots. If not, I guess definitely can follow up with some more kind of uh, the materials, the thoughts, 
kind of some, one of the things that I mentioned at the beginning that actually kind of this kind of training, we have this open data leaders network that actually provide a lot of support for people kind of like you that really kind of are championing the open data initiatives in government and how to, and, and a lot of that is not about kind of, um, uh, just uh, the technical thing, but actually a lot of this is about kind of how to make the kind of things move, no? How to do the pitches, how to kind of explain the value of the things, no? So I think there's a global network of peers uh, that have been supporting on kind of exchanging this, exactly these approaches. I would be very glad to connect with a number of them that uh, uh, could uh, be sharing their experiences as peers. Yeah. Okay, Fernando, and uh, I think uh, we still have a lot of things to do. The first one is the, because I just, I know that most of the government official in Asia, they do not understand, do, do not know the IODC this time. And uh, probably we can collect uh, the name list and uh, send them the invitation. And probably I would like to arrange another meeting and you talk to with some government officials directly. Uh, just like this kind of webinar. Uh, is it possible maybe in these two weeks? Well, no, no, of course. Whatever I'm at your disposal, glad to, to engage. One other thing that comes to my mind, uh, if Steve's in here, we can kind of explore. If, yeah. if you want more than one, one hour and a half to discuss, like the, the kind of hash out, the kind of like the plans for working in the region, yeah. just following up what the kind of Maybe what you could do is to have a space, try to find a space for you, for a small group of, uh, for a AODP meeting in yeah. Buenos Aires. Like, it's not just in the public event, but actually okay. just a space to, to meet for like half a day before the conference. A lot of people do that. This kind of, uh, the Africans will organize their event and so on. So maybe if, if, depending on how it goes and how many people kind of come, that's also an idea, no? That you have a specific place to uh, at least a two, three hours to, to go into some detail on some of the plans. That could be also kind of funny. Well, just a thought. But, uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, I think uh, uh, time is up, and uh, I think everybody understands IODC this year in Argentina, although it's, it's a very long trip. But uh, I think uh, we would like to join uh, this year. and. Uh, uh, we have, uh, although, uh, just I know, 100 people from Asia, and we hope we have more people, probably uh, maybe 150 people to join. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Fernando, thank a, you very a, much. A lot of them, a lot of them sometimes they, they apply, but sometimes they might not have the budget to come as yeah. well. No? That, that's also a challenge sometimes. So I think that uh, we need to definitely do all the efforts now to, 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 to make sure we can support uh, people and that and actually that the right people come as well that can make a change so let's let's work on that okay so so maybe the following i will contact with uh, uh steve later on yeah sounds good okay okay thank you very much everyone and uh, see you next time bye bye thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye.